Let's, let's jump in today uh, to greater love. Here's our theme verse, and we've been, we've been going over this now. This is the fifth time you've seen this. I'm sure you've got it memorized by now. John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this, that a person would lay down his life for his friends. It's about, it's about sacrifice. It's, it's giving. It's, it's being willing to put others ahead of ourselves. And that's kind of what we've been talking about through this whole series uh, uh, about putting others first. What does it mean to ha- show greater love? And we've talked about several different things through this. What does it mean to love our neighbor, love our enemy? Um, what are all the things that, that God asks us to do in Scripture? Today, we're going we're gonna to take it a step further uh, in talking about loving our community. What, is, what does that look like? What does it mean to love our community. Um, we often talk about why Jesus came. Why, why did Jesus come to the earth? Why, did he, why was he born as a baby? Why, why did he come to the earth? Why was that necessary? He came to seek and save those who were lost, right? We, we hear that. We know that. He came to give his life as a ransom for many. He came to, to, to be a payment for our sins. He, he came that, that we might have life and life to the fullest. We, we hear that. We know that. Why did Jesus came? He came for all of those reasons and, and more, right? He came so that we could know relationship with him. And we hear that often, the, the why about Jesus and, and, and why he came to the earth. But today, uh, I want to ask this question, and maybe you've thought about this, maybe you haven't, but how did he come? How did Jesus come to the earth? Um, you might say that he came preaching, that he came uh, teaching, he came healing. And if, if you thought that, you, you would be right. But how else did Jesus come? Let me throw something else out there just to think about. Here's what Luke 7.34 says about how Jesus came. The Son of Man, it says, came eating and drinking. What? Yeah, the Son of Man came eating and drinking. He came eating and drinking. I mean, think about that for a second. Jesus came eating and and drinking. So much so that people even accused him of eating and drinking too much at times. He was he was accused of that, believe it or not. And, and, and some people say, wow, I, I, I never knew that. I mean, I've got more in common with Jesus than I even knew. <laughs> Jesus came eating and drinking. There, there, there's a lot of scripture that talks about Jesus spending time with people, eating and drinking, spending time going to their house and, and eating uh, with them. Uh, there, there was something about spending time over supper with, with someone that was, that was valuable, that was important, that, that, was, that showed significance. Um, I, many years ago, went to, to Bible college, and as I was at Bible college, I took a class that talked about some of these things, about about the, the traditions uh, and the different things that went on in, in this time period, the period of, of Christ, the time period that the Bible um, uh, talks about uh, with, with Jesus and when he was on the earth. And, and one of the things that I learned is very informative about um, the, 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 the eating and drinking and the time that they spent together doing this. Um, one of the things that I learned, it was, it was not just... A, a, a quick meal like what oftentimes it is for us today. It's, it's a fast food society, right? We, we eat and we're gone. I, I, my kids eat so fast, I'm still just beginning my meal a lot of times. My kids are done and, and, and gone. They want to be excused from the table. Um, they're fast eaters in, in, in a fast food society. Um, but for people in that era, in that day and time, it was oftentimes a two and a half, three hour event when you got together and, and, and you would eat dinner with someone. It was, it was a special occasion. It meant something to be invited 
to dinner, and oftentimes it would be a, a group of people, and it would, it would be the whole extended family that would very, very often get together and, and have meals together. Why? Because it was so special. It was, it was intimate. It, it, it meant something. It was, it was the sharing of, of what God had blessed you with and, and the produce and all the things that you had and you were eating. You, you know, the, the, the work of your hands had, had enabled you to be able to have this food and you were sharing it and, and it was a blessing to those uh, that, that were a part of your family. And you got to spend significant time with them. Scripture talks about this in, in, in Revelation, about that, that we get uh, to have a seat at the king's banquet table. Jesus had a, a last meal with, with his, the people that he cared about most, his, his closest friends, his disciples. There, there, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot in Scripture that talks about this, and, and if you know the, the, the history, if you know the, that time period, it was, it was significant. It meant something. It meant that, that you were part of that family, if you will. You were a part of the community. And today as we talk about loving our community, you may have thought, and, and when we say that, oftentimes we think the, the community that God's called us to, the community that, that we're in, the, the, the city or the surrounding area called to our community, and we want to reach our community. We say those things all the time, and it's, it's important to us. And yes, that's, that's a big deal. And, and, and we believe that God's called us to that. But when I say loving our community today, what I'm talking about is loving the community that God has blessed us with and, and, and the ability to be able to have community as a family. What, is that, what does that mean? What, is that, what does that look like? Do we often think about and do we really realize the blessing of community, the blessing of, of being able to spend time and be close with and really connect one with another? What does that look like? What does it mean to, to love our, our, our times of community, our times of fellowship, our times of spending together. What does Scripture say about that, and how is that important, and how should that be important to us? I want to I wanna look at some things today, and I want to challenge us with this. Here's a Scripture in the book of Acts that kind of shows what it looked like in those times for them to be together and to spend time together. And as we go, kind of go through this, Hopefully it'll be challenging. I just got a couple things that I want to I want to hit on today, and, and drive this point home. But let's look um, at Acts chapter two, starting in verse forty two, and we're going to read quite a bit of scripture here, and I'm going to kind of break it down a little bit as we go through it. Here we go, starting in verse forty two, it says this, and and before I jump in here, it's talking about the early church. It's talking about the people that had come to know Jesus. Jesus at this point has has already died. And, and, and risen, he's already at the right hand of the Father, okay? And, and the early church, the people that had followed Jesus, they're spending time together, and, 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 and this is kind of what's going on. It says, they, meaning the early church, had devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to fellowship, to, to spending time with one another, and to the breaking of bread, which is eating together, right? Jesus came eating and drinking, eating together, spending time eating together, and to prayer. All three important things. But, but, but notice, fellowship, eating together, and, and prayer, all listed together. Those are all important things that they did together. It goes on. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs perf performed by the apostles. It, God was working through them. All the believers were what? Together, right? They were together. They spent time together. It was important that they were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to what? Meet together, together. They were together in the temple courts. They broke bread. What does that mean? They ate together. They spent time in one another's homes Eating together, breaking bread. They broke bread in their homes and ate what? Together. Together with glad and sincere hearts. Praising God 
and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. You see, there was significance, there was importance in the fact that they were together, spending time together, eating together, uh, fellowshipping together, uh, being in one another's homes together, and, and, and it caused them to be able to know the heart of one another and be able to know the, uh, the, the heart of, of God in that. In many, many instances, and I learned this in, in the class th- that I took, that that, that was something that, that helped them to understand and be closer to God because they were closer to one another. Being, being together and being close together meant they were also close to God. Why? Because they were encouraging one another, they were sharpening one another, they were helping each other, they were ministering to the needs of one another. If, if somebody had a need, they helped meet that need. If somebody was hurting, they helped come around them and encourage them. That's what they did and, and, and why they felt like that that was so valuable, so important, and, and such a big part of their relationship with God was also having relationship with one another. You realize, see, God created us for fellowship. He created us for relationship, not just with him, but with one another. But it all starts with our relationship with him. See, we're created for that. We need that. Oftentimes, we don't realize, and people don't understand, we need relationship with, with people. And it all begins with a relationship with God. And out of our relationship with God flows our relationship with one another. And, and, and it works together. It's a fellowship. Our relationship with God allows me to, to be able to fellowship and, and, and minister to and help those, those around me. But I receive from those around me. And it, it just grows my relationship with God. It's, it's, a, it's a constant working together. Um, I heard... And uh, about this, this book that, that was written, and I did some study on it. Um, and I can't remember the name of the book right now, but this guy wrote about uh, the, 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 the fellowship and the relationship that went on during this time period. And he talked about why that, that doesn't happen today like it did back then. And he, he, he lists several things and several reasons why uh, it, it doesn't happen today like it did back then and, and why that, that's a real challenge for the church and for people of God because really we should have relationship together. We should have community in that way, but it's, it's, it's a greater challenge today. Why? And he lists several things. The first thing he listed was, believe it or not, air conditioning. Air conditioning. I mean, think about it. Used to, before air conditioning, how, did, how would people spend the cool of the evening? They would go out and sit on their front porch, right? And, and, and so they're sitting on the front porch and people are like, hey, how you doing? Hey, neighbor, how's it going? How, how are things? You know, that kind of, you, were, you were forced a little bit more to interact with, with the people around you. Now, with, with uh, modern day technology, with that air conditioning, you, you just you stay in, inside. You stay in your home and you're just kind of closed off. From, from, from everything else. He, he lists that as, as one of the reasons why it, it, we're less uh, of, a, uh, of a community that we saw back in those days. And those, you know, we, we build fences around our houses, around our, you know, our, our uh, yards. And, and so we, we like to hide back in there and just kind of do our own thing. And, and, and that was one of the things that he talked about. We even have gates now and gated communities where you can just kind of drive in and I don't have to worry about anybody. I don't, have to, you know, I don't have to talk to anybody. I can drive around. Another one was the garage. The garage. You can drive right into your garage and it's an attached garage. Used to, back in the day, we had detached garages. And, and you'd have to get out of your car. You'd have to lift the garage door you know, drive in, and then you'd have to walk to your house. And, 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 and just in that short amount of time, you you'd m- might see neighbors or whatever. Uh, it's a little different now. You, you, you can drive right into your, your garage, right? And you can just walk right into your house. We have these attached garages. The, the garage door opener makes it even better because now you don't have to get out of your car, right? You can just drive right into your little car house and then go walk into your house and you just stay, you know, in that. And you don't have to... You don't have to see anybody. You don't have to wave anybody. You don't have to talk to anybody. You just go right in, you know, 
to uh, your, your home. Uh, another one is uh, we have caller ID or, or answering machines. Remember when answering machines come out? When I was in college, I had an answering machine even on my, in my dorm room. And I didn't have to work. And if I didn't want to answer the phone, I could just let it go to answer machine. And then somebody would go, hey, Jason, what's going on? Oh, I'm not answering that one, right? I don't want to know why that guy's doing So, you know, you have answering. You can screen calls. Same with caller ID, right? You didn't have to you, you see who was calling. No, I think I'll let that one, you know, I'll call them back later or whatever. Uh, just, just another way to not have to communicate. E- even more so now, we just, you know, we can see what's going on on Instagram or we can, you know, double tap and, and like and, hey, you know, we've got, you know, we got the friends that way, right? We don't have to, we don't have to, do a whole lot. We can just text or, or whatever. We don't have to talk face to face. It just, it's changed the relationship. It's re- changed how we interact and how we do things today. And it's a far cry from what it was then. Now, listen, those aren't necessarily bad things. Technology is a great thing because it allows us to be able to reach around the world in, in, in a matter of, of seconds, unlike what we ever have seen before. I mean, it's, it's an incredible time that we live in in order to be able to reach people and be able to, you know, share the gospel with people. It's, a, it's an incredible thing. So I'm not knocking on that. What I am saying is, though, it's made it that much harder for us to be able to understand community and to be able to live in that. Why? Because it has to be purposeful. It has to be purposeful for us to, to spend time with one another and make it a point to, to share What's going on in our lives with people face to face? Yeah, I can see, you know, what my high school friends are doing down in Oklahoma on Facebook, but I, I, I don't really know them. I don't have any interaction with them. I don't know them the way that I did when I was seeing them every day. Th- th- things have changed. I can, I can see things on, on, on social media, but I, I don't really have the same relationship. What my point is, is God's called us to community and he wants us to live in community how do we do that how do we do that the way that God would want us to and how does that help us how does it impact us and how can it impact us just like the 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 church in in the book of Acts how they did things together that was so important but but let me let me read you a new version a new version of uh, of scripture maybe that you've not heard it's 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 the NJV or the new Jason version okay it's just it's a new version it just came out today. <laughs> well, let, me, let me read this because this is really, you know, this may, may hit home for many of us because this may ha- be how today that scripture that I just read would be translated. It might go something like this. The Christians were devoted to themselves and occasionally got to church when they had time. No one was filled with all because there were no signs and wonders performed by the believers. Very few of the believers were together, and they had almost nothing in common because they had no real time with each other. Think about that. It's, it's, it's different, right? That's, that's, not, that's not what the Scripture said, but how true might that be? How true might that be for, for our lives? How, how true might that be in today's day and time? You see, the, the world that we live in, they, they, they almost worship independence. Think about it. You know, to be an independent person and be able to do things on our own, and I'm, I'm independent and I can, do, I can do this and I can do that, is, is, is worshipped in our culture and our society But to be a Christ follower is the exact opposite of that. Because to be a true Christ follower is to be dependent on Christ. And to realize that I am nothing without him. I cannot accomplish what God wants me to accomplish without him. And without the people that God has placed around me to help me, to encourage me, to point out my flaws, to point out my blind spots, the things that I don't do well or see well, when I need somebody to come alongside me and, and say, hey, Jason, hey, what about this? Hey, Jason, that, that, that was a little bit harder or whatever. I've got people and should have people in, in my community that, that can help me with that. And so often when we say, you know what, I can, I can do this on my own. I can, I can make this on my own. I can live this out on, on my own. What we're doing is we're saying, I don't, I don't need to be dependent on anyone. I don't need to be dependent 
on Christ. That's the exact opposite of what Scripture really challenges us to do. And, and, and so there's this, this tug of war in, in life between our culture and, 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 and what Scripture challenges us to. See, we were created for community. We were made to need one another. We were ne- made to need relationship. And so how do we do that? How do we have community the way that God wants us to? You've, you've probably heard people say, I have a personal relationship with Christ. I have a personal relationship with, with God. And, and, and I've heard that all my life. And if you've grown up in church or been around church much, you've probably heard that personal relationship with God. But here's the deal. If, if I could challenge that just a little bit, because really it ought to be a shared relationship with God. It ought to be something that we all, we do together as a community that, that we run after, we go after, we serve, we live for Christ together as believers. That's what we see in Scripture, and really that's what God as the church has called us to be. How do we do that? How do we love our community? Well, I think we love our community by living in community, by living in community, and how do we do that? Let me share just real quick a couple of things. Living in community looks like this. First of all, it's living in community with other believers at church. At church, when we, when we come together and we spend time together as, as a body of believers, we're, we're connecting and we're challenging and we're encouraging one another. We're hearing God's word and we're worshiping together as, as a unity, as a, a body of believers. There's something powerful about that. There's something that, that, that encourages, challenges all of us. That when we, when we do that together as, as a body of believers, it, 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 it does something for us. But it also encourages those around us. When I, when I see people worshiping God, when I see those up here leading us, and, and, and our team's doing an incredible job, right? I mean, they're, they're, they're continuing to grow and, 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 and get better each and every week as they lead us in worship. When I see them leading us, it, 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 it challenges and, and, and causes me to want to worship that much more. There's something powerful about that and, and, and us doing that together. Here's what Hebrews 10.25 says. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love. Spur one another on, together, doing that, encouraging one another in love and in good deeds. Not giving up meeting together. Not giving up meeting together. Not forsaking the gathering together of of believers in church. But, but doing that regularly, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but instead encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching, as, as we know that, that Jesus is going to be coming back soon, listen, all the more reason that we should be together, that we should spend time together, that we should make it a point, a priority, that, you know what, I'm going to make sure that what's most important in my life, that, that, that it's a big part of my life, that it's a big part of our family. Why? Because we need that. We need that. We, we need the things of God being in our life regularly. Why? Because it should be a priority. It should be something that, that we set as, listen, my family, we're gonna, church is up, we're going to be there. Unless there's something that, that just keeps... We're going to be there, if at all possible. We're going to be quiet because there's something about community that we all need. There's something about being a part of a, a, a group, a, a community of believers, having fellowship together, having a relationship with one another that, that spurs us on to good things, to good deeds. And here's the deal. We're not going to be able to reach our community if we're not living in community. We're not going to be able to make a difference in what God's called us to if we can't together encourage one another and make a difference in, in, in the lives of, of each other. Because why? That's, that's what God's called us to. And that's how we work through the challenges that no doubt every day brings. But community is valuable. It's, it's important. You know, there's something, something powerful about presence. 
right? There's something powerful about being in someone's presence. You know, we can, we can hear about famous people. We can see them on TV, but it's a totally different deal when you're actually in their presence, right? Um, I've heard my, my daughter talking about going to uh, concerts of people that she enjoys and likes to hear and all this kind of stuff. And I've heard her talk about, because she's very dramatic in her talking about, oh, I'm going to go get to see so-and-so, you know, whoever it might be, Justin Bieber. Ah, woo, Justin Bieber. I want to get to be at that concert, ah, you know? And there's just something about being in, in, in their presence, right? You, you get to be right. He's just going to be like right over there on the stage, you know, and I'm going to get to wait. He's, he might look at me. <laughs> there's just something about presence and being, you know, together. There's something about that that just is different, Right? And, and we think about these different famous people or whatever, but, but we don't often realize just being present with people, just how significant that is. I think now more than ever, more than in, in past years, we kind of are starting to get a, an inkling because of having to be quarantined, having to be, you know, separated from people for, for, for a period of time and things, and things are, are, are opening back up much more now, and that's, that's great. I love that. Why? Because being together, there's something powerful in presence. There's something powerful about being with one another. Why? Because we encourage, we sharpen, we help each other. Being a part of community is important, and we should be a part of the community of a, of a church that, that allows us to be able to love on one another, to help one another, and it should be a connection that goes beyond just the, hey, glad, so glad that you're here today. It, it, it ought to be a, man, how are things going? How are you doing? What, what's going on? And, 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 and really building relationship with one another. That's, that, that, that's why we go. Yeah, we hear good word. We hear, you know, the word of God preach. We hear good worship and those kind of things. But the connecting of, of, of through relationship with people and, and, and building community is so valuable. And sometimes we, we, we don't realize why that is so important. God wants us to, to build connection through community with other people in our church. There was a study that was done that says that the average American today, right now, the average American goes to church about one hour a month. And, and I heard that and I, I, I'm like, I, I don't know what to do with that because there's no way that, that the people of God can get what they need in relationship, in community, in just one hour a month. And it breaks my heart because that's not what God wants. That's not what, what really is, is best for people in, 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 in living in community because we really need much, much more than that. And there's, there's different ways that we can do it. And I realize it's, in, in this day and time, we're having to be creative about how we connect and how we spend time with one another. But listen, we were created for relation. We were created for community. And, and, and I think that society and different things in, the, in our world today are, are challenging us and making it more and more difficult for us to live in community the way that God designed it. And we have to work that much harder to develop relationships and live in the community that God wants us to live in. Here's the second thing real quick. We have to live in community with a committed community of people. We have to live in, in, in relationship, live for relationship with a committed community of other believers, of people that, that, that want to 
be together with, with you, want to be a, a, a part of a community with you that, that you're headed in the same direction, you're doing the same things, you're, you're living life for, for uh, the purposes that, that matter most. It's about living together in community with, with committed people of God. We were created, like I said, we're, we're created for community. We say all the time around here, community is our middle name, right? W- what do we mean by that? We believe, we believe in being together. And, and one of the things that, that is important to us is our community groups. We, we believe that, that it's important to take time and, and spend together in, in small groups. You've probably heard it in different places, them called small groups or life groups or community groups or whatever. Here we call them community groups because we believe in community. We believe that it's important to develop community with, with one another. And how do we do that? It's, it's not just times when we sit in rows. This is good and it's important because we're receiving God's word. But we need much more than that. We need times where we're sitting in circles. And we're able to just talk with one another and, 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 and be real and do life together. And man, this is going on. And got this challenge it's taking place in our family and got this sickness that's run through our, our house right now or whatever it might be. We need to be able to have that time where we're sharing with the people that are the most important to us, the things that are going on in life. It's important. It's important to have that relationship. It's important to have that family atmosphere because really when it comes right down to it as the church, we're the family. Of God. And it should be really like a family, a family getting together, talking, encouraging one another. Maybe family you don't see all the time, but family that that are close, family that you love. That's what the family of God really is all about. But here's the thing about it is even in family, sometimes it can get messy, right? Sometimes it can get difficult. Sometimes it can be challenging. Sometimes you have to deal with things, right? Sometimes you have to talk about things that aren't easy to talk about. Sometimes you have to share the, the hurts and the frustrations. And really, the only way to get the healing that you need is to be able to open up and share those things. But when you're doing it with people that you know love you, it makes all the difference in the world. See, even in, in family, it can be difficult and I don't know about you, but <clears throat> I got family that sometimes I wish weren't family. You know what I mean? I think everybody has those family members. You're like, oh, they're coming for Thanksgiving this year. Oh, great. <clears throat> sometimes it can, be, it can be difficult. But what do we do? We, we, we love family. And even, even when we're in strife with family from, from time to time, nobody else better pick on them. Right? Nobody else better have anything to say about it. We'll come to their defense. We just we need people that that, that, that are willing to, to come around us and help us, even in our difficult time. And it's it's about loving, it's about forgiving, it's about showing the the, the best and, and believing the best in those that, that matter to us. Here's what Proverbs 17, 9 says. It says, whoever would foster love, and that's what we're talking about, right? Greater love. Whoever fosters love, here's what they do. They cover over an offense. <clears throat> what does that mean? They, they, they cover over an offense. It, oh, you, you said something that was a little bit harsh, and you said something that really could have, could have been taken very offensively. And I can't believe you said that to me, but here's what we do. We say, oh, you know what? They're, they're my brother. They're my sister. And even though they said something that I could really take offense at, here's what I'm going to choose to do. Because they're part of my family, I'm not going to, I'm going to cover it over. I'm just going to act like it didn't happen. And I'm going to just love them anyway. In a world that says, hey, if somebody says something, man, get right back, say something back to them, you know, let them know. Now, here's what scripture says. Here's what scripture says. Whoever would foster love covers over an offense. In other words, don't make it so easy to be offended. When, when, When society says be offended about everything, guess what scripture says? It says, don't make it so easy for yourself 
to be offended. Isn't that what family does? Should be. Because that's, we love one another. We care about one another. It's community. But whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. You bring it up, you talk about it, you, oh, you hear what they did, da 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 da. What happens? It, it ruins friendships, it separates relationships. It's incumbent upon us as Christ followers. Listen, I want, I want to do everything I can to, to make sure that relationship stays intact, that we, we stay close. And if that means I gotta, I gotta overlook something that was said, maybe out of hurt or maybe just said in the moment because they were angry about something or whatever, I, I, I'm gonna overlook that on purpose. I'm gonna overlook it, why? Because I care more about them than the hurtful thing that they said in the moment. Why? Because community matters. Relationship matters. And I love them beyond their mistakes. And if I had never made a mistake like that, then I could cast a stone. But I've made plenty of them. Right? Isn't that the attitude? Isn't that, isn't that what family does? Yeah. We, we cover over. We smooth, smooth over those hurts, those wrongs. Here's what 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says starting in verse 4, says that, that this is what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. I remember this that you did, and I remember this that you did, and I remember that that you did, and here's just one more thing that you did. No, 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 no. We forgive and we just let it go. We don't bring it up again. It's gone, just like what God does for us, right? It's gone. We don't keep record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Listen, when, when we live in community and we, we spend time together with, with one another and encourage one another, it's why getting together in, 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 a, in a group, a community group, is so important. And if you're not in one, listen, I encourage you. It's, it's important to build relationship, to spend time with one another, to encourage one another so that, so that you can be able to pray with someone who's hurting but, but in that time, it's, it's, it's good to build relationship. It's good to just be able to hang out and talk sometimes. But there's also the, the, the need to be able to dig a little deeper, to be able to go down, you know, a little bit. What's going on? Hey, man, I noticed you were a little bit off today. What, what's everything okay? Are you doing okay? Are you feeling all right? Is, is something wrong? What, what, what's really going on? Oh, I'm good. You know, we, we, we come to church and, hey, hi, how are you doing? Everything good? Oh, yeah, bless God. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Bless the holy favor. Everything's great. You know, we, have, we, we just have a tendency just to do that. And, and yes, it's good to profess, right, that, that, that God is good and he's working in our life. It's good to do it. But you know what? Sometimes it's good also just to be able to be honest and say, you know what? I'm struggling. I'm struggling this week. I'm, I'm hurting. I'm having a hard time. It's been, been one of those weeks and, and this went on and that went on and had this thing happen at, at, at work. And, and with someone that you care about that know knows you and knows your heart and knows going to stand with you to be able to just say, man, this, this, is, this is going on and I, I need help. And they're not going to judge you and think, well, man, you're really messed up. You know, there's nobody going to do that. Because then we'd have to point fingers at ourselves too. It's, it's about loving on, on each other and being able to say, you know what, I've been there and I'm hurting with you and let me pray with you. And let me help you walk through this. And there's been times when we've had occasion you know, that, that, that this, this was going on and this was, this was happening. And we've had people that would ha, have wanted to love on shares, but, but instead had given us not the greatest advice. You ever been there? You need to make sure that you're around people that can encourage you and, and uplift you in the things of God and, and, and give you godly wisdom when you need it. That's why, man, being a part of a church and being a part of a, a small group and people that can love on you and pray with you and help you is so vital. It's so important. They can, they can celebrate the wins with you and they can walk with you through the, the rough times. When, when you, you, know, you buy a new house or you buy a new car or whatever, they celebrate. It made me just think, we, Jen and I, just this week, we, we bought a new vehicle. And I didn't tell anybody 
that we were buying a new vehicle. We, it had been about five years since we'd bought a new vehicle and we needed to trade this one in. It was starting to get to that place where, you know, it's time, you know, it's starting to nickel and dime us. It was time to trade it in and get something, you know, get an upgrade, get something newer. And, and so this week we did that. We, we, we bought something, had, had to have, you know, had to be able to pull a trailer for church. Had to be able to carry a lot of people because it gets taken on youth trips and women's trips and all kinds of stuff like that. So it had to have plenty of room for the people, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So had to have all those things. And so we bought, bought something this, this week and, and I didn't tell anybody. And, and I got to set up yesterday and everybody said, man, what? I like the new car. It looks great. All these people coming to me. And I should have known because I'm married to Jen. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that. None of you. But all these people coming up and, and celebrating with us and, 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 you know, something just part of life you got to do, you know, every now and then you got to, you know, but, but as part of community, it's celebrating with each other, celebrating, you know, hey man, this, this, this win in your life, man, that's awesome. That's so great, man. We're, we're so glad for you. You got a new house? Praise that's awesome. You're building a new house, man. When's it going to be done? I can't wait to see. It's going to be incredible. I'm so excited for you. Man, that, that's part of community, right? It's part of community. And, and, and if, we're, if we're missing that, man, we're missing out. And it, and it shouldn't just be the, the celebrating of, of just superficial things because you can do that on Facebook. It should be much deeper than that. And it shouldn't be the walking through things with people just on Facebook. It ought to go much deeper than that where you can come around and put your arm around somebody or, 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 or grab hands with somebody and say, listen, I know you're hurting. I know you don't want to talk about it, but I'm not going to leave until we talk about it. Because getting it out, getting off your chest, sharing it with someone, that's what we do because we're in a relationship together and we care. And we love you. And we don't want to see you walk through this alone. You're not alone. We're walking through this together. And it means something to me to see you hurting. And I don't want to see you walking through this on your own. We love you. We care about you. We want to walk through this together. Why? Because we're part of a community. Part of a group of believers. Lisa, how many texts did you get this week about Jim? Jim, we're so glad that you're here today, man. So glad that you're here. Jim was in the hospital just this week. Been with heart stuff. Had a stint put in. Jim, so thankful that you're here today, man. We love you. Love you. So thankful you're a part of this body of believers. So glad that you're still here with us. He was in ICU just earlier this week. We love you guys. And, and, and listen, that's just one example, just one example of walking through things together as a body of, of believers. It's about community. It's about community, right? Why? Because that's what God's called us to. And if we're missing that, we're missing it. If we don't have that in our life, we're, we're, we're missing it. We're, we don't have everything that we need. God's called us to be a part of a community together have that community working together the way that it's supposed to. Yeah, it can get difficult sometimes. Yeah, we can have to get down in the mud with one another. Yeah, we have to work through some things. Yeah, we have to ask each other tough questions sometimes. But guess what? It means we care. It means we love one another. It means we're willing to go beyond just surface level. We're willing to get to the things that really matter most. Don't be afraid. Don't let fear keep you from living the fullest and living in community the way that God wanted us to and really being able to live the life that he created for you and for us as a church.